Welcome to Pathways latest production, the Ryburn Valley. It's the second in our series of films about the valleys of Calderdale. Behind me is Baiting's Reservoir, situated typically at the head of the valley, gathering water from that biggest reservoir of all, that vast sponge, the moors. Construction work on the dam began in 1948 for Wakefield Waterworks Department. It was officially opened eight years later in 1956. The dam wall is 250 feet high and provides a magnificent viewpoint for looking down the valley. Before trekking onwards, just pause a while and savour the moment. A new viaduct was built at the far end of the reservoir, replacing the old bridge, which can still be seen when the water level is low during times of drought. Now times have moved on, and with the increase in the volume of traffic, a complete reconstruction of the bridge has been necessary. Archaeology. It's amazing to think that this quiet, secluded valley was once filled with a noisy clatter from dozens of mills. To give us a background to this intriguing story is local historian David Cliff. How many mills were there actually in the area, David? In the Ryburn Valley itself, there were about 40 mills at one time or another. Uh, in this small valley, Ryburn Dale Valley, there were four, four mills. And where are we standing at the moment? We're standing on the site of Ryburn Dale Paper Mill. Uh -huh. And there was a mill here as far back as 1746. What did that, that do? That was a fulling mill, that was a, text, that was a woolen mill uh, for fulling the cloth. And it developed into being? Uh, well, that, that burnt down in 1860. Uh, and then they built the paper mill. Here's the culprit behind the thunderous drone that's accompanied us up the valley, the M62 motorway. This Transpennine motorway connects Hull and Liverpool. It's 107 miles long and was one of the greatest feats of engineering in motorway history. Built in answer to the fact that in winter it was often impossible to cross the Pennines, it was designed to be the pass that never closed, an ideal that's often not achieved. Rishworth Grammar School began its life here in 1724, being funded and founded by John Wheelwright of North Shields in Northumberland. It served as a school for over a hundred years, with pupils boarding at the nearby goat house. For a time it was a church for the people of Rishworth, but with the building of St John's it became a chapel for the sole use of the school. There's a clean, airy feeling to the interior, with the bare stone walls and four sets of windows down each side. The east wall is almost totally taken up with the windows, bearing various coats of arms. With increasing pupil numbers, the chapel was extended in 1961 and pews rearranged to give more space, but the intimate, calm atmosphere remains. The new school was built in the Georgian style in 1826 with a significant extension in 1932. The quadrangle made for a pleasant meeting area. Its continuous success story has meant development appeals for the provision of facilities such as a new sports hall and pavilion, science labs and in 1983 the Chan Music Centre. In the 1980s the field to the north of the school was used to provide a large teaching block and assembly hall. Each extension has seen a careful marrying of the old and the new. The school was for boys only between 1921 to 1968, at which point it reverted to being co-educational. This blue plaque commemorates the point at which a huge trestle bridge connected Rishworth Station to the road here at Slitherow Bridge. The coming of the railway to the valley gave a boost to its industry. Local people could now more easily make day trips to Blackpool, Southport and other exotic places. The line was opened in two stages, Solby Bridge to Ripponden in 1878 and extended to Rishworth in 1881. Opening day was an occasion of great joy. Church bells pealed and a cannon was fired. Over 2,000 people travelled on the line that day, having been given the day off from factories. The line ended here at Rishworth Station. Plans to extend the line under the Moors of Lancashire never materialised. 
These pictures seem so solid and permanent that you feel there must be some evidence remaining of the railway's existence. It takes an act of some imagination to locate the exact spot on which the original Rishwa station stood. Nature has long since reclaimed it for its own. The largest community in the Ryburn Valley is Rippenden, which had its major growth period in the 18th and 19th centuries after the building of the Oldham and Rochdale Turnpike Roads. Originally the route to the village was by way of a steep cobble lane known as Old Bank. Old Rippenden, now a conservation area, was first recorded in the 1300s as Ryburn Dean, meaning a forded river in a valley. It's amazing to think that this green area is once a warren of buildings from different historical periods. There were two inns, weavers' cottages, and a large community building known as the Working Men's Hall. They're all demolished in the 1960s. Chapel Farm remains as one of Rippenden's oldest buildings. The graceful spire of St. Bartholomew's Church dominates the area. Of royal foundation, it can trace its origins back to the 15th century and is the fourth building on this site. All over so soon. But what a once in a lifetime experience. Vive la France! Steady now. As its name suggests, Millbank owes its settlement to the development of mills along the steep side of valley of Lumclough. The second part of its name reflects the steep sided landscape, which has determined the way the settlement has been shaped, with houses jostling for space. There are up and down houses which sit on top of one another. A network of cobbled pathways wind down the hill and balconies provide good viewpoints over the cluster of roofscapes. Here, where the River Ryburn merges with the River Calder, our journey ends. We hope you've enjoyed our explorations of the valleys as much as we have. See you again soon.